it's a thing that I love. Drawing and painting uh, are, are things that when I do them, I come home just really happy that I did them. I have learned a lot about how to function better as a human being because I've been doing this. I think I was always a person who was afraid that what I was going to do wouldn't be perfect. And of course, when you draw and paint, it's never perfect. And so I have learned to relax about times when something that I am doing doesn't turn out perfectly because there's not a point in being wound up about it. You might get an outcome that you like that's unexpected because you did something a way you hadn't tried before. So it's helped me be more adventurous and helped me be more accepting of, of some fundamental things about myself. Um, I love painting with watercolor. Uh, because of being sick last year, I got a little bit out of the habit and when I went back to it this year, I uh, felt a little rusty and I felt like I was rusty on some fundamental things that were separate from the process of watercolor painting. So I went back to pencil and that's been kind of fun. It's, I I'm, feel like I'm doing better about the fundamental things that I felt were weak. Um, but I'm also seeing that, you know, the work is pretty tight, pretty, um, by comparison to the watercolor work, it's more formed, it's more solid. Uh, and so it's interesting to see who likes that work as opposed to the watercolor work that was freer and less defined. Um, okay, Goody House is a monthly poetry reading organized uh, by a woman named Shine Goody. And she's a good poet herself, and she chooses people who are good poets. Um, and so when I when she suggested to me at one point that maybe I would like to paint while I was there, it really hadn't, neither one of us had a concrete idea about what it would turn into, but it's turned into this wonderful routine where um, I, I just try to capture a moment on these poets' faces as they're reading that shows some kind of uh, emotion that's associated with the emotion in the poem. And the quick 10-minute uh, modeling time for an, a model who's moving, essentially, has really been a good challenge for me to really m memorize when I'm looking at someone, you know, where the shadows are and what shape makes that person's nose, that person's nose, and that kind of thing. Um, and I, I once in a while we'll get a compliment that I really captured something that they were feeling. So I feel like that's kind of a success. But it's become a, you know, I, I paint and I give people their portraits because I feel like this is a gift to them and their poetry is a gift to me. Uh, but they're always surprised. It's like, ah, oh, this is for me? <laughs> like, well, your poem was so wonderful for all of us. So it, to me, it's an even exchange. <laughs> I thought that I would be lucky if I ended up getting to know you because it was so outside what I expected that a young black man, you know, who was clearly socially really in his element there would think that I was someone who he would like to talk to. So. And, and defined there for the viewers at home. They're at the, um, what was the? It was the black and white party. It was the black and white party, right, right, because I just went, like, I didn't do anything special. I just wore a white shirt and a black skirt, but you had a white wig on when I first saw you. Okay, why, why was I wearing a white wig? What was your character in Blandy Warhol? Is that right? Blandy Warhol. Blandy Warhol. The Black Andy Warhol. Okay. So, yes. I thought you were very showy and bold and that um, I felt, you know, singled out in a good way. Uh, I still carry the card that says you're beautiful that you gave me that night. So I still have it in my bag. 
um, it was very exciting when we finally did meet. Uh, and I, I just bring it up again with Marlene, whom I painted with the next day, because I told her, you know, I had a strange thing happen last night. A guy introduced himself to me, and he's this young, good-looking black guy, and I have no idea why he would be interested in me, but he seems to be. <laughs> and uh, I said, who knows, maybe something, I'm, I'm deciding what to do, you know, maybe something will come of it, maybe nothing will come of it, but it's kind of an adventure, and it's been an adventure ever since. You waited so long to ask me out. Yeah. A month. Yeah, yeah, it was a month. I, I waited a month to ask you if I could ask you out. That's right, that's right. You waited a month to ask me if you could ask me out. So you built suspense, and then you built some more suspense. And when did you know you were falling in love with me? Oh my gosh. I knew that I wanted to keep seeing you. In fact, a number of weeks I just said, are we going to get together this weekend because I would like to see you? <laughs> and I'd never done that before. So I assume that um, I knew at that time that I at least wanted to continue to see how the relationship developed. I think I really didn't realize I was falling in love with you until um, that night we were in bed and we hadn't been dating very long a few months and you said is it too early to talk about love and I thought oh my god this man has just made himself so vulnerable to me and I just I just was so it was such a tender moment for me it was lovely um you were so open about it and I was so touched that you um were so frank about it and I was like no, it's not too early to start talking about love. I was really happy that you said it. Yeah, I still get pretty delighted when I think about that whole process. I just did not expect this. Um, what, a, what a bizarre outcome it's been, too. Uh, I sort of was set loose when I was divorced, and then I was set loose again when my job left town, and it hasn't always been steady, but it's mostly been okay, and then I've had this wonderful joy of knowing you. It's just been, I mean, I said it the other day, it's been the dessert of my life. <laughs>